Paul and Full Bruce, and this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about our massive neighbor, Jupiter, and actually answering a question of the sciences recently tackled in one of the papers. With the question being, why is it that Jupiter doesn't seem to have massive rings like Saturn? Why do the rings of Jupiter look so much smaller in comparison? And as many of you recently learned from some of the pictures from the James Webb telescope, like the one right here, Jupiter does have rings and they are visible from planet Earth. But, as you can see from the image, they are really, really small. And so, let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but let's actually start with the idea of rings, because so many objects in the solar system have them. Jupiter has them, Neptune and Uranus also have them. This older image from Hubble, for example, shows us what the rings of Uranus look like, with this image from the Voyager 2 probe showing us the rings of Neptune. But so many other objects in the solar system and obviously outside of the solar system, have them as well. Rings seem to actually form pretty easily. For example, a lot of minor planets seem to have them as well. Here we're talking about objects that are smaller or less massive than planets, which our solar system seems to have quite a lot. A few years ago, the scientists identified rings around the object known as Chariklo, the object that actually resembles an asteroid more so than it does a planet. In this case, these rings are also relatively big and relatively easy to see, because they tend to block starlight as Chariklo passes in front of various stars. But a lot of other objects, specifically the ones orbiting in the same orbit as Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus, seem to have them as well. In this case, it's been confirmed that Chiron, one of the minor planets, seems to have large rings too. With one of the studies from a few years ago, even explaining how a lot of these icy objects very likely form the rings because of the ice being lifted from the surface through various gravitational interactions with the bodies nearby, with the ice settling in a circular orbit around the object. It's even been implied that roughly around 10% of all of these minor planets may have some kind of a ring formation around them, we just haven't really seen them yet. With I guess the object known as Haumea, another minor planet, being one of the more unusual ones, possessing the most unusual rings as well. You can learn more about Haumea in one of the previous videos in the description or somewhere right there. It's even been suggested that Earth might have had rings several times as well, and very likely had big rings right before the Moon became the Moon that we have today. In other words, the material that formed the Moon was probably a large ring formation before that. All of this was due to the very large collision with the object we refer to as Theia. But we also think that some rings, especially large rings, are usually temporary. For example, it's believed that the iconic rings of Saturn are very likely going to fall back onto the planet at some point in the next 100 million years or so. It's also believed that Mars and one of its moons may have a kind of a cycle of formation and destruction of various rings as the moon itself approaches closer and turns into one of the rings, but it might also then move away, becoming the moon again. Although that was just a theoretical study from a few years ago and it's never really been officially proven. But we do know that this moon is going to at some point turn into the rings as it approaches closer and closer to Mars. But the main question is, why do certain rings form into these large shapes, whereas other rings remain tiny and never grow any bigger? Well, as some of the studies explored previously, various gravitational interactions seem to create, shape and destroy the rings over time. And the more massive the object in orbit of another object, the more likely the rings are going to be more extreme. For example, take a look at this image from NASA showing us the rings of Saturn along with the moons inside those rings. All of these moons are actually really, really small and possess very minuscule mass that doesn't really influence much in the vicinity, which in essence allows Saturn to maintain really wide rings around it. And the closest relatively massive moon to Saturn is the moon Titan. But if you actually look at its location around the system, it is pretty far away from Saturn itself. So in essence, it doesn't really have as much influence on the rings unless, of course, it approaches closer. But now let's take a look at Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is obviously more massive and has a lot more mass around it, so theoretically, it should be able to produce much, much wider rings. But it also has these four objects in its orbit. And these are really massive moons in comparison, and as you can kind of even see them from this particular simulation, they're much, much closer to Jupiter as well. As a matter of fact, they're known as the Galilean moons because Galileo was able to observe them directly using his telescope. And that's of course because these moons are large enough, massive enough, and close enough to be visible even using a very typical telescope that you can find in any store. And so we only find rings of Jupiter 
much much closer to the planet where the moons don't have as much influence. Suggesting of course that unlike around Saturn, the moons of Jupiter, Ganymede, Io, Callisto and Europa prevent the formation of a much larger ring around Jupiter. Or to be more exact, preventing the accumulation of the dust that seems to form a kind of a disk shape. They essentially end up breaking all of this apart because of the gravitational interaction. And all of this was recently confirmed by using various computer simulations in this study that clearly identify that the four moons of Jupiter have actually always prevented the formation of rings around this planet, implying that a massive planet with massive moons can most likely never have any major rings around it, with the moons in this case creating enough disturbance that prevent the dust from settling around the planet. And the actual rings that do exist right now are very likely formed either by the emissions from some of these moons or possibly by the emissions from the surface of the planet due to certain collisions or through various magnetic interactions. In other words, these rings are obviously very different in composition to the ones around Saturn. These rings are mostly made out of ice, whereas the rings of Jupiter predominantly seem to be made out of dust. Which sort of suggests that the rings of Saturn were probably created by the breakup of some kind of a large icy object that approached Saturn a little bit too close and then ended up being destroyed by its gravity or more specifically its tidal forces. But if this happens around Jupiter, its rings are very likely going to be destroyed within just a million years or so, possibly even faster. So even if an object approaches Jupiter and then ends up being shredded and creates some kind of a ring at first, the ring itself will very likely disappear pretty quickly at least according to the simulations and the analysis from the study. But this also sort of raises a question about the largest rings discovered in the galaxy. Here we're talking about this planet that seems to have these massive rings and potentially massive moons around it as well. It's actually a planet you can sort of see right there, known as G1407b, a planet we've discussed on the channel several years ago. And in this case, it's a planet with potentially the largest rings we've discovered in the galaxy. But according to this study, this wouldn't really make sense because in this case, it also seems to possess massive moons. So something in here doesn't add up. Which means that more studies need to be done about this in order to discover what's happening. But we'll actually be talking more about the discoveries from this planet relatively soon, with a video about this coming really soon as well. Not sure when yet, but it's already been made, so it should be coming out. So if you'd like to learn more about this planet, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. On that note, thank you so much for watching, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.